In his opening statement today, Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman said, I want the committees to know I am not the whistleblower who brought this issue to the committee's attention. I do not know who the whistleblower is, and I would not feel comfortable to speculate as to the identity of the whistleblower. And according to some reports, that is all Republicans wanted to talk about with Lieutenant Colonel Vindman today. They repeatedly questioned him about the whistleblower and tried to get him to give them a name even though he said under oath that he does not know who the whistleblower is in his opening statement. Here's Chairman Adam Schiff's reaction. The president would love to punish the whistleblower. Um, the president's comments and actions have jeopardized the whistleblower's safety. Uh, the president's allies would like nothing better than to help the president out this whistleblower. Our committee will not be a part of that. Uh, we will not stand for that. Turning our discussion now, someone else who was in the room today, Congressman David Cicilline, a Democrat from Rhode Island, serves, he serves on the House Judiciary Committee. Congressman, uh, what can you tell us about the Republican attempts to get a name uh, for the whistleblower today? Well, Lawrence, first of all, the whistleblower statute, uh, of course, protects the identity of whistleblowers. This is essential so that people can feel comfortable coming forward to report misconduct or corruption. So it's required by statute that the identity of the whistleblower remain confidential. The efforts to uh, unmask the whistleblower are disgraceful, but it's part of a pattern to really distract from the underlying evidence, the substance of the evidence. That is, the president, you know, attempting to persuade a foreign leader to interfere in an American presidential election with uphold, you know, holding up military assistance as leverage to try to get him to gin up a false investigation against one of his political opponents. And, you know, the president admitted that on camera. He released a telephone transcript or a record, a report of that that confirms it. And there's, of course, a whistleblower report uh, that details the scheme in, uh, in its entirety. But we have subsequently heard from a number of witnesses now who have corroborated the essential parts of this scheme. And so the whistleblower's identity is really irrelevant. It was really to point to the misconduct of the president. The president's admitted it. Uh, the t transcript of the uh, phone call uh, corroborates it. And we've heard from a number of witnesses that are filling in the pieces. So this is an effort to distract. You know, the Republicans will not talk about the devastating evidence against this president of his misconduct, of obstruction uh, of, of, of American elections, of betraying his oath of office, of betraying the national security interests of the United States and undermining the rule of law. And instead, they're talking about these process arguments just because they are desperate not to focus on the facts because they have no argument. It's so shocking. What can you tell us about the process argument that erupted in the uh, deposition today? Uh, Congressman Swalwell, apparently in a clash with uh, Republican Mark Meadows, uh, th that w that w that apparently uh, forced Chairman Schiff to adjust the the way the proceeding was was going on. Well, all I can tell you is, uh, you know, I can't discuss the, the questions that were asked or the, the answer, answers that were provided by the witness, but there has been a pattern of disruption by the Republicans throughout the proceedings. First, they claim they weren't allowed to participate. Of course, they have exactly the same amount of time as the Democrats. There are three committees of jurisdiction. They're welcome to come. Most of them don't even come to the proceedings. Uh, then they did that sort of, uh, they marched in and violated the rules and brought some electronic equipment in and then already pizza. So there have been a number of tactics where they've tried to disrupt our effort to collect evidence, to hear from witnesses under oath. And that continued again today. Uh, I notice in the uh, resolution that you're going to vote on, Rules Committee is going to vote on it tomorrow, full House is going to vote it on Thursday, that outlines the rules for public hearings in the impeachment investigation and the Intelligence Committee. And then later, in the Judiciary Committee, when the Judiciary Committee gets to the actual articles of impeachment consideration, there's a new set of rules there. And those rules seem to be designed to deal with Republican obstructionism. 
Yes. Uh, so the resolution we will take up really sets out a set of rules that we will file follow in the next phase of the impeachment inquiry. That is the public hearing process. So it sets out a set of procedures in the Intelligence Committee as well as the Judiciary Committee to allow for prolonged questioning by counsel. In the Judiciary Committee, it will allow the president to have counsel present to do some questioning as well. So it really sets forth the procedure for the next phase of the impeachment inquiry, which will be a public process where the American people will hear from witnesses that we have heard from and really begin to understand the full gravity of the president's misconduct and uh, this elaborate scheme both inside the White House and outside the White House to uh, per pressure a foreign leader uh, to interfere in an American presidential election to help President Trump in his reelection. Really shocking behavior by the president. But, but the, the Judiciary Committee rules that I read tonight uh, are unlike uh, any I've seen before for the previous uh, impeachment investigations because the rules seem to anticipate obstructionism and uh, and bad behavior on the part of the president's lawyers uh, in that room and possibly the Republicans. Uh, and when you look at the past resolutions, they anticipated actual bipartisan cooperation in these hearings. Well, you know, Lawrence, unfortunately, we have seen uh, complete obstruction by the president throughout this process. For, for many months, he was successful in ordering people not to appear, not to produce documents. That has begun to change. Thankfully, we've had some great patriots that have come forward and complied with subpoenas issued by Congress and shared very important testimonies to the committees. Uh, but, you know, we expect that the president is going to continue to engage in the behavior that he has and will attempt to impede uh, the progress of our hearings. And so we're trying to intend anticipate that and put rules into place that will allow evidence to be considered, witnesses to testify, the committee to function in a productive way, uh, not expecting the president's going to change his behavior or his lawyers are going to be any different. So we've set out rules that we think will make it efficient and transparent and allow the American people to hear the evidence. Congressman David Cicilline, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. You. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from the last word and the rest of MSNBC.